This is DW News live from Berlin. German anti-terror experts ranked Anis Amri a low threat. Could officials have done more to stop Amri, the prime suspect in last week's deadly truck attack in Berlin? New reports show the authorities knew he was looking for ways to make a bomb and that he tried to contact the so-called Islamic State. Also coming up, a nationwide ceasefire in Syria. The government and opposition groups have agreed to stop fighting. The truce goes into effect at midnight local time. Russia says it will act as a guarantor of the agreement along with Turkey. And another death in a show business family already in mourning. Actress Debbie Reynolds has died just a day after her daughter Carrie Fisher passed away. We'll take a look back at the movies that made Reynolds a star. I'm Sumi Somaskanda. Thank you for joining us. Well, could German security officials have done more to stop last week's deadly truck attack right here in Berlin? There were more revelations today that German anti-terror experts believed the prime suspect behind the Berlin truck attack, Anis Amri, was unlikely to commit an assault. The Tunisian nationals believed to have driven a massive truck into a Christmas market in West Berlin last week. Twelve people died and scores were injured. Amri was later shot in Milan after escaping Germany following the incident. And German media are also reporting that counterterrorism officials knew Amri was tightly linked to a radical Islamist network in the country and that he was researching how to make bombs. German Chancellor Angela Merkel has ordered a sweeping review of security after the attack. And we have our political correspondent here with us in studio, Simon Young, who's tracking this story for us. And we are also awaiting a statement from the general prosecutor's office in Karlsruhe on an update on the latest in the investigation. Uh, we'll be going live to that. Those are the pictures that you see there in the bottom of your screen as soon as that uh, press conference there begins. Uh, while we're waiting for that, though, Simon, you've been following this story. What is the latest in the investigation that you can tell us? Well, as, uh, as you mentioned, uh, a number of details have emerged about Amri, uh, Anis Amri, the man uh, alleged to have carried out this attack. attack. People are pretty clear uh, that he was a dangerous person, as you've said. You know, the authorities, counterterrorism experts were monitoring his movements, and it it's, seems to be clear now that he had quite a lot of contacts in the radical Islamist scene. Uh, he was a, a, a um, recognized by police in Dortmund, for instance, in the western city of Dortmund, as a sympathizer of, of Islamic State. Uh, and the assessment from the authorities was that uh, an attack from him was possible. Uh, they said it wasn't likely, but it was possible. And of course, that uh, promotes that key question why didn't they continue to monitor him? All right, Simon, let's listen to, into this press conference now. Uh, the man had been arrested yesterday because uh, there was a suspicion that Amis Amri, just before the attack, had sent him a voice message and also um, a photograph via a messenger service. Further investigation, however, have uh, established that the person who had been arrested preliminarily is not the possible contact of Anis Anri, which is why he had to be released from custody. As uh, to the current status and the investigation, what I can say for the time being is that the video claiming responsibility by the uh, media outlet close to the IS is uh, authentic as per our investigations, and it does show Andre. Regarding the escape route taken by Anis Andre, our investigations have concluded that he went to France via the Netherlands, then to Italy. That is the current status. With um, Mr. Amri, he also found a train ticket which details a route from Chambry to Milan. Apart from that, we found a SIM card, and SIM cards like uh, this one have been uh, issued free of charge in the Netherlands in the days preceding Christmas. And this is why we assume he traveled via the Netherlands, or he might have done. Uh, median reports also speak of a video um, material which uh, it is claimed show um, Ms. Andre in the Netherlands as well as in France. I cannot comment on that yet. 
The investigations into this matter are still ongoing, so bear with me on that. As far as the um, weapon is concerned, our knowledge is as follows. The weapon used by Amis Anri in Italy, with which uh, he shot at an Italian police officer, is an Erma caliber 22 weapon. And the um, cartridge found inside the truck uh, in the cabin of that truck in Berlin is also a 2-2 cartridge. However, whether um, it was fired from the same gun uh, will have to be established by ballistics. This investigation is ongoing. We have uh, an imprint of the projectile from Berlin sent to the Italian authorities, and currently the comparison is being made. So we hope to be able to tell you more about this soon. According to the preliminary post-mortem uh, examination result, the truck driver died uh, very close to the time of the attack. This is uh, the preliminary uh, post-mortem, of course. Uh, no stab wounds could be discovered. When exactly? Uh, death occurred is something which the final post-mortem report will uh, tell us. Um, this report, uh, our forensic specialist has have said, will be given in January, so I can only beg your indulgence that I cannot give you further details for the time being. We assume that there was an automatic braking system uh, with which the truck had been um, fitted, and that was why the truck uh, braked and came to a stop after 70 or 80 meters, which is the reason why even more devastating consequences could be avoided. This is what I can tell you right now on the status of the investigation. Uh, Dr. Frank, the chief federal prosecutor, has already said that the investigation um, regarding further um, people involved in the attack or people in the background, these investigations are continued unhindered and we will not slacken. Thank you very much. All right, you've been watching a press conference with Frauke Köhler. She is a spokesperson for the Federal Prosecutor's Office, speaking there in Karlsruhe with the latest on the investigation into the Berlin truck attack last week uh, that killed 12 people and injured dozens more. Uh, Simon Young is here with us in studio and has been listening into this press conference as well. Simon, um, what is the latest that you heard there, especially on this, this gentleman, this 40-year-old Tunisian who was arrested and suspected to have links to Anis Amri, the main suspect in the attack? Yeah, we, we missed the first couple of uh, words there from the press conference, but from what I understood uh, that she was saying was that that man who was picked up yesterday has now been released and that they've established that he uh, was not a contact of Amri's, not a significant person anyway for the investigation. I mean, presumably uh, they got onto him in the first place because it was said his phone number was found in the, uh, on, the, on the mobile phone that was recovered from the truck used in the attack. So he's been released, so that's a, a setback for the investigation. Other than that, she says uh, that the investigation uh, continues to uh, look at all these other aspects. Uh, the uh, video claiming responsibility that was put out by an Islamic State media outlet uh, last week, uh, they've described it as authentic. Uh, they didn't, didn't explain further what that means, but presumably they believe that, uh, you know, there is a, a concrete a link between Anis Amri and the Islamic State and this attack, uh, and also confirming other details that we'd already heard about the route taken by uh, the attacker after uh, he'd committed the attack, that he went first to uh, the Netherlands and then to France uh, and to Italy, uh, where he was ultimately apprehended. 
Uh, she also touched on a question that had been asked in the media about um, the Polish truck driver and the truck's uh, braking system and uh, if that possibly uh, hindered Anis Amri from um, causing more damage than he did. Yeah, this is a very interesting detail that came out yesterday. This was, a, uh, I believe, a Swedish-made truck that had uh, a, a modern, advanced automatic braking system installed, uh, which meant that uh, when sensors detected that the truck had collided with a solid object, it came to, uh, to, to rest automatically, independently of what uh, the person at the controls was doing. Uh, and uh, the spokeswoman there saying that this avoided even more devastating consequences. Of course, that's, that's a speculation, certainly, uh, but it's clear uh, that, uh, you know, uh, if the thing stopped before it would have done, uh, then that was a, a helpful development. So that, that, I think, is an important detail. Also telling us, uh, confirming in fact, what we already knew about the, the Polish truck driver right. who'd been, uh, who'd been uh, essentially kidnapped by Anis Amri, uh, he appears to have died very close, as she said, to the time of the attack. So uh, the possibility there that, you know, he was alive for a period in the cab, uh, either being forced to drive or, 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 or on the passenger seat incapacitated, uh, as we thought. And, of course, there were a lot of reports originally that he may have taken steps to somehow pre prevent the attack or, or uh, you know, cause the vehicle to swerve away from people who might have been injured uh, or killed. So uh, there's a lot of details that we still don't have, but uh, a lot has been confirmed in, the, in this brief press conference. Sam, there's been so much uh, speculation about whether this has been a sloppy police investigation into monitoring Anis Amri before the attack and also how the attack was handled. And we hear now that another suspect who had been taken into custody for possibly having links has been released. Does this open the police up then to more criticism? Well, I, I think there definitely is a, a case for the authorities to answer. You know, we know that uh, they met at least seven times during the course of this year, between February and November, it said. Uh, it, police uh, investigators met specifically to discuss the case of Anis Amri. And on two occasions, terrorism prevention experts were present and they were asked to give an assessment of how likely it was that an, an attack would be carried out by Anis Amri and how, how likely it was he was planning a specific attack. Uh, and they assessed that that was unlikely. We know that the authorities had a file that was updated as recently as the 14th of December. So, you know, they were really looking very closely at this man uh, and well, we can say that they came to the, uh, to the wrong c conclusion. They have an eight-point scale mm -hmm. of how dangerous these people are. Uh, and, you know, there are about 200, 300 uh, people who are, who are assessed as potential um, sources of danger, terrorist danger in this, in this ca case. Uh, Mr Amri had uh, the five, number five rating on this eight-point scale. So he was nearer the top. It meant that a, an attack, they said, was possible, but as they put it, not likely. Well, I think you have to ask from that, you know, if it was possible uh, and they could see that he was the kind of person who was going to be doing it. And we also know that they discovered that he'd researched, um, you know, bomb making. Well, uh, you have to put all that together. And as an ordinary member of the public, you have to wonder why the police did not you know, follow this man's every move. Those are exactly the questions that are being asked in the media and in the public. Uh, looking at this list of uh, 200 to 300 people who are on a watch list at the moment, up to 550, it's believed, um, mm. does this debate then change how they are going to be treated in the future? Well, th th this, is, this has renewed the debate about, uh, uh, about how such people are to be treated. Um, a lot of people are, uh, you know, are, are pointing out there's a link here between uh, this concern about public security and uh, jihadist extremism and so on, and uh, the refugee question, the fact that we have a lot of people in Germany at the moment whose status for remaining here is not clear, their, their citizenship in many cases is not being clarified, where they're going to stay and what their allegiances might be is not clarified. So there are a lot of politicians calling for more to be done to uh, identify people in that group specifically who may present a threat to the public order and it's some cases for existing laws to be tightened, for those people uh, possibly to be held in detention for longer periods, uh, and for the police to have more powers to deal with those people. 
There's also a much wider debate about, you know, uh, surveillance uh, by video cameras in public places uh, and uh, other police powers. So, you know, th th this certainly has, of course, this attack has stirred up, uh, uh, renewed the debate. And you have, um, you know, more looking more widely at the refugee question, you have, for instance, uh, the Bavarian Conservative Party, the CSU, the right wing, essentially, of Angela Merkel's party, saying, you know, they're not going to join her next government if she gets the opportunity to form one after the election in, December, in, in September um, unless she commits to, you know, an absolute cap on the number of people arriving. So, you know, there's definitely a link between the idea of jihadist extremism and terrorism in Germany uh, and these wider debates uh, about people coming into the country. All right, our political correspondent, Simon Young, with the latest on the investigation and the ensuing debate. Thanks so much, Simon.